the, the one that we bought over from Newmarket has never shown a rib. I've never felt a rib. Um, and she's been on the hillside in the winter with whatever she can eat. That's it. In, in all weathers, snow, whatever, she thrives in snow. She has a massive coat that is kind of double layered. We never rug her. She's never cold and she's never ribby. Um, but I think she probably would be dead by now if she wasn't allowed to live that cold winter, have that cold break and have access to this kind of uh, plant material. And uh, Well, we know that for a fact because she was on the point of uh, no return when we brought her back over here from Newmarket. The fat pads, when you have um, a crusty neck or you have pads, fat pads around the tail or on the shoulders, they are actually, the, the fat is an endocrine organ, so it's a hormone factory, um, and it interacts with you. It is a survival mechanism, let's face it, because especially for ho horses, particularly for native ponies, they're bred to store fat so they can survive a harsh winter. So if, you, the, and to do that, they have to have all these chemicals that are released about um, how hungry they, the, the horse is, um, how, when he's full, what he should eat, where he should eat, how he should store the fat. Um, so the fat pads are actually very hormone factories. So when you get too much um, fat, too many fat pads, you've got just too many uh, hormones being kicked out and that's when the insulin and the glucose starts to, the metabolism of that, um, the way that the tissues are sensitised to that, begins to change the way that the body will absorb glucose and starch and it's at that point you're running into a, a danger zone because if you think about it in the wild a horse would not stay fat all year round he would be thin in the spring he would rush out to his spring grass his hormones would go eat as much of this as you possibly can you need it to survive you've got to raise a foal you've got to breed you've got to do all these things through the summer and so the horse gorges, and which is why a lot of native ponies do gorge. The fat pads go on, the fat stores are there, the body is healthy, and those stores are then there to get them through the winter. And where it goes wrong is that if you continue to maintain that weight level without dropping off or without changing the diet to a lower plane of nutrition, then you're continually, or the horse is continually having uh, levels of, of hormones which are inflammatory floating around in the body and that's when the problems start. I think um, equine metabolic syndrome is very hard to diagnose anyway and I think that everyone's gone overboard on horses having um, high insulin levels or high glucose levels. Um, some horses will naturally have higher levels than others um, but the to me the only way to manage it is to let them lose weight at certain times of the year and then you will know that their inflammatory chemicals are diminished. Um, the other conditions that are related to inflammation are certainly uh, gut ulcers, allergies are very much linked to inflammation, certain types of lameness are linked to inflammation, Cushing's is a good one. The metabolism in a native pony is very geared to survival. They are survival machines and the breed societies have um, kept their genes following on generation after generation and so as a, an entity they are geared for harsh weather, living out, getting cold, um, growing a very long coat, shedding their coat two or three times a year and each time they shed their coat they use an energy cycle. So if you don't allow them to shed their coat or grow a coat, that you're causing them not to use fat or not to use a store of energy for that purpose. And I think that for native ponies, that's hugely important. I think we really underestimate um, the necessity to go out and live rough for a while. Um, and they, they shouldn't be rugged and they should be allowed to at least grow a coat before you take pity on them and pity on your paddock and, and bring them in because you can't bear the mud, which is what a lot of people do, I think, in the end.